Welcome to my front entry and the staircase that I have spent for about the last two months transforming from these light maple handrails and wood trim to a darker walnut stain using a gel stain. I can finally say that I'm very happy with the final results, but this was not an easy project. So if you're considering doing something like this, I highly recommend watching this video. I have lots of tips and lessons, and I also share some real obstacles that I encountered along the way. Prepping for a project of this magnitude really does take a while. I spent at least an entire week just taping and protecting, laying down plastic everywhere, sanding everything, and then giving everything a thorough cleaning. Luckily for me, my spindles were already white, and so all I needed to do was protect them. I started out taping the tops and bottoms of each spindle and then adding this weird newspaper contraption. I do not know why I did this. It didn't give me a lot of room to work between each spindle and honestly stain was still getting everywhere. So my solution and what I highly recommend is just taking the time and a box of saran wrap to wrap each spindle individually. This gave me so much space to work between them and I never worried at any point about getting anything out on those spindles they were very well protected and by the way taping the angled spindles that go down the stairway were initially really challenging for me I kept ripping these tiny little pieces of tape and trying to form them around and then I figured out a really great way to tape those Take one long piece of tape that you angle up the stairway and get that secured in place. And then you're gonna make two folds in the back. As you start to curve that piece of tape around, you're gonna be able to fold and make a crease in the tape. Then you wanna come around to the other side and do the same thing, angling it down the other side of the stair rail. Curving it around will allow you to make that crease. And then you just wanna secure that tape around the rest of the rail. Then take a second piece of tape and tuck it snugly onto the underside of the spindle and wrap everything tightly together. That will hold it nicely. I started out using an electric sander, which was not a great decision for me. Part of prepping for the gel stain is to lightly sand all the surfaces, but I hate sanding, so I bought this electric sander that even had a little finger attachment so that it could go between all of the little spindles. Unfortunately, this shortcut that I was so pleased about caused me all sorts of problems that I will get to shortly. It also added more time to the project, so my tip is just hand sand everything. Cut yourself some small little pieces of sandpaper and just start going with your hands. You'll be much happier with the result. At least that was the case for me. And after sanding for the final prep stage, I wiped everything down, got all the dust off with mineral spirits and was finally ready to start gel staining. I made this top rail my practice rail and I had three colors that I was trying to play around with to find the best one. In the end, I liked the old masters, but it, this is the point where the project really started to go awry. As I started applying the stain, these are the results that I was getting blotchiness, unevenness, it looked terrible. And on that bottom plate where I had sanded between the spindles with that finger piece, check out the huge scratches and scrapes left behind from that that I couldn't see until I put the gel stain down. I honestly had no idea what I was going to do from here on out because this was so bad. My conclusion was that, you know, even though gel stain will adhere to anything, it doesn't mean it's going to adhere evenly if you've got a weird top coat or you did sand well. On my practice rails, I did decide to keep going and I added several more coats. This is like three coats and then I did get to a point where this rail had six coats on it and I probably could have lived with this but I just wasn't real happy it was still streaky it was very dark in some places and I just didn't like it 
To be clear, I do not blame the gel stain for any of this. The stairway has taken a lot of wear and tear over the years, and some areas were worn down to the bare wood, while other places were still very shiny like they were brand new. I have to believe that was playing a major role in the blotchiness and I just had not sanded enough or in some places had probably sanded too much and sanded poorly. I felt like I had three options. I could just keep layering the gel stain until it was opaque possibly um, or just I could live with this but I wasn't happy or I could keep sanding away which I've already said I hated but in the end I chose to just start stripping the original finish off down to the bare wood. At this point it was an easy transition because everything was taped and protected already so I really just needed a few supplies to get started. I got myself citrus strip and a metal bucket that I lined with Reynolds wrap and some very inexpensive brushes and plastic scrapers and then of course all the personal protective equipment. You really need all of this N95 and safety glasses and definitely get decent gloves. Those gloves that I'm wearing in this video were not enough and I learned this the hard way. As I scrubbed away, the, they fell apart and I have two fingertips that suffered the consequences of that. These are the gloves you need. They are made out of neoprene. They are heavy duty and I even went through two pair of these. Large extra large was way too big for my hands but that was all that I had available to me so wish they made some for the ladies sizes. Stripping wood is not terribly difficult with citrus strip. I've used this before. It's just time consuming and really messy. Basically, you wanna layer it on really thick. I found that the longer you can keep it on and keep it wet at the same time, the better your results will be. And so the way I accomplish this is to pull out that trusty box of saran wrap again and lay that over top for several hours and that gives you the best results and it comes off pretty easily after that. Altogether, I probably did two to three passes with the citrus strip. There were some really stubborn spots both on the original lacquer finish coats and with what I had already stained. One thing I found helpful was putting all the scrapings into a box that was lined with plastic and that kept things nice and clean. Also for the really tough and stubborn spots, just dip a scouring pad into the citrus strip and really scrub away and that will help get it off. Prior to starting this, I watched countless other videos of people out there who have used a gel stain on their staircase and had really wonderful outcomes and results that did not have to do the citrus strip phase and did not have blotchiness like I got. So you may have no problems here at all and be able to put the gel stain on without stripping anything. I guess I'm just sharing this to let you know that this is a potential. You could end up with a blotchy finish and my solving it was with the citrus strip, but maybe there are other things out there I would love to hear if you tried something else. Okay, so I think I am officially done with the citrus strip phase of this project. It's taken so much time to get here, and now I feel like I have to take the time to really clean the wood, sand it, get all the residue off. I thought I had been getting the residue off with the mineral spirits and the scrubber pad, but there's still residue in nooks and crannies and the little spaces. So I'm really spending the time scrubbing. I use these scrubber pads to get a lot of that off with water or mineral spirits. Tons of these rags. I'm even using a cup with a toothbrush to get in there and even toothpicks, friends. Use the toothpicks to get it right out of the small spaces. Um, I think this will take me maybe a few days to really get it ready and prepped all the dust off and finally get to staining again. <clears throat> yeah, I'm pretty much over this project, but I'm in and I just got to get it done. And off I go. It's been over three weeks that I've been working on the stairway and it's finally time to see if all of this extra work 
is gonna pay off. I'm nervous, but I'm hopeful <laughs> that I have not wasted all of my time. I might cry, but let's see what happens. So I'm using Old Masters gel stain. That's what I had used upstairs on the sa on the rail. So all I'm hopeful for right now is this will go on smooth and even. I'm going to apply it with a sponge, like a small little sponge brush, and then I'm going to use the sock to just kind of smooth it, wipe it out, get the streaks out. I we'll see how it goes. As it turned out, all of my work was not in vain. That first coat of gel stain went on nice and even. I could even see the wood grain showing through and none of that blotchiness that I had gotten before. It looked so nice. And here are my results. After three coats of the gel stain, I felt like this was the perfect color and matched my floors. And now my next step was to put on a polyurethane finish so that everything would be protected. This Minwax Wipe On Poly came highly recommended by my mom, so I thought I'd give it a try. I cannot say enough about how much I loved this product. I put a thin cotton sock on my hand and would just pour a tiny little bit of this onto the sock and wipe it on. There were no drips. It was so wonderful. Altogether, I did three coats on everything and then did a fourth coat on the key places that I felt like hands would touch a lot. At some point, I will try to follow up and let you know how well it's holding up, but honestly, this goes on so quick and easy that I feel like I would just go back from time to time and refresh the coats it's it's just a piece of cake to do so i'm hopeful this will hold up really well the instructions for that poly do say to lightly sand between coats which i tried at one point but i would do this with extreme caution i did not find that that was helpful also it was taking off some of the stain so i stopped doing that so use caution with that instruction I decided early on that it was just much easier for me to do the rails separate from the newel posts. The newel posts just have a different direction of wood grain and they have lots of detail that needed to be done. So I decided to tackle those completely separately and I'm glad I did. You just tape them off and, and work them completely separate. And then when I pulled the tape, there were a few little places that got missed. But then I took a very detailed painter's brush, dipped in the stain and painted that on. It was no problem at all. And the final step in the staircase was to paint that center piece that's connected to all of my spindles. I decided early on that that was not going to get stained because of how difficult and time consuming that would have been to try and do between the spindles. Staining would have been a nightmare. And notice that after you've spent almost two months on a project, you no longer change into work clothes and you have a glass of red wine in the background. <laughs> However, I do not recommend painting and drinking wine at the same time. The primer that I used was a Zinser oil-based primer that bonds and adheres to literally anything. And you can top coat it with a water-based paint, which I did. I had that matched to my trim from Benjamin Moore and I am so happy with the results. They're perfect. And now my favorite part is looking back and remembering where I was and now seeing the finished results. It makes all of the time and mess and effort worthwhile and makes me so happy. I just want to add that I am not sponsored or supported in any way by the products that I recommended in this video. They were all things that were either recommended to me or were just available at my local hardware stores. But just in case these products are not available to you and you want to use them, I will put links in the description below. And as always, thank you for tuning in to another Uniquely Ursula video. If you got anything out of it, if it was helpful in any way, hit that like button, leave me a comment in the comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again, everyone, and have a great day.